Hello and welcome to our special TV forum, Afghanistan in Transition. This is a joint production between CGTN and Afghan station Shamshat TV. This is the first co-production between two major media networks of both countries. In a previous discussion, we called for much-needed humanitarian aid to Afghanistan. And today, we'd like to focus on efforts to rebuild the country and get to the bottom of the current situation and challenges in Afghanistan. It's been a year after the Taliban acting government started working on rebuilding the country. The humanitarian issues coupled with crippled economy on top of the U.S. and its allies' sanctions did not bode well with the Afghan people. One can see the Afghan government is ready to welcome international investors, but the international community largely reacted positively to the Taliban's appeal, although with conditions. But is the rebuilding really on track? We are now bringing ideas from stakeholders from different world on that question. Joining us today in Afghanistan, Mohammad Suleiman, former deputy minister of the Ministry of Industry and Commerce. In Pakistan, director Amina Khan from the Institute of Strategic Studies in Islamabad. In the U.S., Barnett Rubin, distinguished fellow from Stimson Center. In Uzbekistan, Rustam Huramov, who is from the Institute of Strategic and Regional Studies under the president of Uzbekistan. In India, Sudhidra Kukani, who is a former chairman at the Observer Research Foundation, Mumbai. In our Beijing studio, we have uh, Zhou Bo, senior colonel, who is also now senior fellow with the Center for International Security and Strategy with Tsinghua University, also joining us. Uh, we have uh, uh, Pierre Kubo, who is the personnel envoy of the president of ICRC to China. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to the program. First, allow me to present Mr. Yue Xiaoyong, a special envoy on Afghan affairs of the Chinese Ministry of Foreign Affairs. I'm now right in Kabul visiting Afghanistan. One whole year passed since the situation in Afghanistan changed fundamentally. And now stability is gaining ground, challenges remain. I'd like to take this valuable opportunity to share with you China's views on the Afghanistan issue. It is necessary to keep engagement with the acting government of Afghanistan. Any true help for Afghan people can hardly be materialized if one passes, bypasses the Afghan authority. While many have paid extensive attention to inclusive government structure, women's rights, and the education of middle school girls in Afghanistan, it is important to know that dealing with these issues is not incompatible with economic reconstruction. They are mutually reinforcing. To pursue both of them, suggestions, guidance, and the necessary assistance shall be offered in a way acceptable for the Afghan authority. It is also necessary to speed up practical cooperation with Afghanistan. During my trip, Almost all countries spoke highly of the mechanism for coordination and cooperation among the neighboring countries of Afghanistan for its unique role, and reaffirmed the significance of the Twinshi Initiative. The International Conference on Afghanistan held in Uzbekistan's capital, Tashkent, recently focused on Afghanistan's economic development once again. Almost all the countries agree that the U.S. should return in full the seven billion U.S. dollars assets to Afghanistan, lift unilateral sanctions and unreasonable financial restrictions as soon as possible, and fulfill its primary responsibility for peace, stability, and the reconstruction in Afghanistan. 
Afghanistan is still suffering from terrorism. The ISIL launches terrorist attacks every now and then, and the terrorist groups like ETIM are taking advantages of that situation to accumulate strength and expanding its existence and influence abroad. Regional countries agree to enhance security cooperation and urge the Afghan side to fulfill its promise on countering terrorism by taking visible, tangible, and verifiable measures. We have kept engagement with the acting government of Afghanistan, encouraging and supporting this government to promote inclusive government structure to bring about moderate and prudent governance and to realize decisive countering of terrorism and to develop friendly relations with its neighbors. As China's President Xi Jinping noted, a peaceful, stable, developing, and prosperous Afghanistan is the aspiration of all Afghan people. That is in the common interest of all. China is ready to work with all parties and keep on contributing to lasting peace, stability, and reconstruction in Afghanistan. Thank you very much, Mr. Yue Xiaoyong. As one could see, Afghanistan is urgently in need to be rebuilt. Mr. Suleiman, good to see you. You are based in Afghanistan. How much is the rebuilding process going on right now? Well, thanks, Ray. Thanks for having me. It's a pleasure to be part of this distinguished panel. I think the current situation in Afghanistan is a serious situation for all of us, uh, for people inside Afghanistan and for our friends outside Afghanistan as well. In the past one year, the Afghan economy has significantly deteriorated. As you know, the aids are stopped, uh, the assets are frozen, and importantly, much importantly, our ability to do correspondence bank is, is not there. And so therefore, our private sector has been hit tremendously. Uh, yeah. There are new investments, there are new expansion plans. Uh, a million jobs have been lost in the past one year, and we're talking not about just a million jobs, but rather families who were dependent on these jobs, particularly women and, and babies, mothers and babies. And I think this situation is uh, a series of economic crises that we saw in, in the past one year. We also have a, a growing liquidity issue in the market. The current banknotes are deplete, depleted. And if concrete actions are not taken, this situation could go worse. Uh, we, we need to understand that the economy was dependent on international aid back in the day. But right now, this year, we also did not see any significant or solid action, either from the Taliban or international community. Okay. Yes, humanitarian aid is coming to Afghanistan, close to a billion dollars now. But that's the same repetition of, repetition of the same mistake we did for the last 20 years by give, giving out fish and not actually you know, making, peel, making people learn how to fish, uh, which is not sustainable. Okay. So uh, I can say the current situation in Afghanistan, both humanitarian situation and economic situation is quite serious. Go to you, uh, Mr. Rubin. The frozen of assets by the United States uh, uh, of the Afghan banks is pretty much of a big uh, challenge for Afghan today. Many economists around the world also call on the U.S. to unfreeze now. Uh, what do you think is the latest situation? I have also called for those assets to be mm. unfrozen uh, and have signed uh, several of those statements. The problem, it's a political problem for the U.S. government because of the sentiment against the Taliban in the United States, which is so strong. And unfortunately, the Taliban have not done anything to make it politically easier for the U.S. government to do what it should do anyway, unfreeze the assets. You know, the fact that they are still banning girls from going to secondary school, that the leader of Al-Qaeda was found right in the middle of, of central Kabul. Uh, all of those things uh, indicate that uh, improving their relations with the outside world is not an important priority for them. 
Um, now, I think because, as Mr. Suleiman rightly said, it is the civilians and the private sector and others who are suffering from this, not the Taliban. The United States should go ahead and unfreeze those assets. Um, but in rea real political terms, it won't be able to do that unless there are some gestures from the Taliban that we are not seeing. Mm. Senior Colonel Joe, tell me more about your thoughts. Uh, there seems to be uh, blame games going on between the Afghan Taliban government and the U.S. administration of who should take the first steps, so-called, of gestures. Well, I think, uh, uh, first of all, uh, the Taliban-led government really has a problem of uh, get uh, better international recognition because uh, after uh, bin Laden, uh, Osama bin Laden's uh, uh, mastermind attack uh, uh, in the United States, uh, then the international community uh, embodied the UN resolutions have asked uh, the Afghan government to, to hand over Osama bin Laden. And then, from then on, there are a number of uh, uh, resolutions uh, enforcing this kind of sanctions. And these sanctions are still in place. So for uh, Afghanistan to have better de development, I think it, it is necessary for these sanctions to be uh, lifted. But for that to happen, then at least the five permanent members of the Security Council have to reach agreement. And then this is almost like uh, almost like two mm. camps of China and Russia on the one side asking, you know, the United States to give back money and so on and so forth, but the three other countries would uh, uh, insist, as uh, this gentleman had just said, that uh, the Taliban uh, uh, mm. has not met all the conditions right. and even the situation on what they have promised that have not really happened. So there is a, a grain of truth in this. So right now we do not have this kind of uh, consensus. That's why we recently have witnessed uh, several international conferences, uh, one of those taking place in Uzbekistan. So go to you, Mr. Huramov. Uh, tell me more about how do you see whether uh, parties are likely to come together on the issues of rebuilding, and particularly on the issue of funding? Uh, we are convinced that today the international community should not repeat the mistakes of 1990s when the uh, isolated Afghanistan has become a source of challenges and threats to the international community. The international isolation of Afghanistan will lead to further worsening of the humanitarian situation in this country. Thus, it's important not to allow for this, uh, since the point uh, is about the fate uh, of millions of people. At the moment, the interim government of Afghanistan is taking cer certain steps in terms of peaceful reconstruction of the country, strives to improve the socio-economic uh, situation, establish the friendly relations with neighboring countries. Mm. We must, uh, of course, encourage these efforts. The uh, International Conference on Afghanistan held in Tashkent in July this year demonstrated that there is no alternative to dialogue with the new authorities of Afghanistan. Mm. We believe that it, it is very important to develop a comprehensive strategy for building a cooperation with the interim government of uh, uh, Afghanistan for the uh, post-conflict reconstruction of this country. The main goal of this uh, strategy should be to improve the lives of the Afghan people and to eliminate the causes and conditions that the country uh, that contribute to the. Uh, the deterioration of the difficult situation in Afghanistan. I see. It's a committee in Pakistan. Tell me more about your thoughts about these, uh, these kind of debate. We see that debate going on for almost a year now. I think we've been hearing debates on Afghanistan for more than two decades now. So I think we, this is not something new, but I think the fact that the Taliban have been in power now, there are a number of expectations from the group. Um, and while we do talk about the unfreezing of assets for the Afghan people, um, as Barnett said, there are sensitivities involved, but I feel that there can be other avenues and ways to um, provide um, at least economic assistance. And this is separate from the humanitarian aid. But for that to happen, of course, the Taliban have to honor their pledges of reform. And while one understands that the group obviously is trying to consolidate its position uh, internally within the group and in uh, Afghanistan, while it's trying to grapple with, you know, trying to run um, ministries that it has no uh, capacity of doing simply because they don't have the knowledge to do so, they can deliver on basic yet fundamental rights. And I think the fact that they um, reversed their decision to allow uh, girls to return to high school is extremely problematic. And 
it isn't the way, it is a major stumbling block that is preventing uh, or rather keeping the international community at bay. Therefore, I think the responsibility does lie on the Taliban to deliver on, mm. on air, in areas where they can and simply human women's rights honoring those pledges that they made themselves. Mm. And I think education is an area that is uncompromisable. Okay. Uh, Mr. Suleiman, you want to quickly respond? Well, I think I, I share a lot of uh, the points that was, were, were presented by my colleagues and fellows. Uh, yes, there, there has to be a regional strategy which, which doesn't need to be a competitive strategy. It has to be a strategy of cooperation. I don't see that coming. I think the region still has not uh, have a consensus of how, on how they want to deal with Afghanistan and so on in the international uh, arena as well. Uh, we, we, I'm not seeing a lot of consensus coming out. I'm not seeing a lot of quick actions that needs to be done or taken for, for the situation of Afghanistan. If there are friends out of Afghanistan and they claim to be friends of Afghan people, uh, what we saw in the last one year was just probably humanitarian aid, one of the issues that we think was, was useful. But other than that, on the issues of banking, on the issue of rights, fundamental human rights, I do not see and haven't seen any pressure being pushed uh, exerted on, on Taliban, especially uh, when they banned education uh, for girls and women, and the issue of inclusivity. So I think we need to go from more from a point of confrontation and to cooperation, both in the region and also beyond the region. I think we need to see a lot on that. Mm, very interesting. We we'll certainly see very different opinions at this point. And uh, I would love to bring us one year back to the time when the Taliban acting government just took charge of the country. I had a chance earlier to talk to uh, Mr. Suhai Shaheen, who is then uh, from the Taliban political office. He told the efforts his government were making to bring peace and order to the country. We are Islamic Emirate of Afghanistan for the last 20 years. Uh, we were fighting the occupation in our country under the name of the Islamic Emirate of Afghanistan. And the other is the, an Afghan inclusive government that we, uh, we want uh, to include some of the uh, personalities, uh, Afghan uh, personalities, Afghan politicians in that uh, government. For that, uh, there is consultation going on. So uh, I think uh, bo both um, uh, can uh, go. Uh, to, to gather uh, because uh, a new government uh, set up which is uh, going on consultation for that uh, it will be announced uh, soon that was a year ago uh, a quote from then the acting afghan government spokesperson now I'll go to you mr uh, Kumpo, uh, I understand that you and your colleagues have been on the ground for decades in Afghanistan over the past year, particularly so. How do you look at the words then and also the current uh, uh, paradox? I think the focus that we will have is always on the human dimension. And if you think about some of the challenges that Afghanistan faces right now, it's to how to bridge and overcome the cycles of responding to emergencies and then move to a phase where development, cooperation and economic investment becomes possible. And our organization took the very unusual step in November last year to decide to directly support 33 hospitals and eight medical training institutions in Afghanistan by paying the salaries to 10,500 staff, these are Afghan doctors, Afghan nurses, these are hospital administrators, anesthetists, mm -hmm. and everything that you can imagine that is needed, plus providing fuel for running generators and paying for the food for patients. Why did we do that? Because the entire health system was on the brink of collapse, and this is a way to preserve the foundations for future development and mm. reconstruction. Because if the health system were to collapse in this critical stage, not only would it bring immense suffering and add to the criticality, right. but it would also undermine the basis so for your future point transition. Is? The, the point is that humanitarian organizations can help bridge this phase 
but we are not the solution for the future and mm. it is true that international cooperation has to now shift to and overcome some of the reluctance that is there in terms of engaging Afghanistan to address the longer term and more sustainable solution yeah. that the country needs because one cannot expect of humanitarian organizations to somehow substitute for entire sectors of public institutions yeah. in Afghanistan. And I, I underline this because reference was also made to the situation of women. By paying the 10,500 uh, employees in the health system these salaries, there we are also preserving the 30% of them who are women. Equal rights is very important. And if we want to ensure that women and girls receive appropriate medical treatment in Afghanistan today and in the future, we also need to have women educated and trained in health professions. You are women using, will play yeah, very you're using role. one example, uh, a case study of you, what your organization did. Of course, this is uh, bringing us uh, to the interesting point that is uh, whether humanitarian help is going to be the starting point of rebuilding or shall we have two very different sets of thinking. One is more humanitarian crisis, how to deal with it. And the other is in parallel, how to rebuild the country. So Mr. Uh, Kokani, tell me more about your thoughts. How do you see these two things? Are they uh, of similar nature or actually they should be dealt with differently? Uh, thank you very much for having me on this program. I believe that uh, responding to the humanitarian crisis in Afghanistan and helping Afghanistan rebuild itself on a sustainable basis are interlinked. It is the moral duty of the entire international community to help Afghanistan in this hour of need for its reconstruction. And above all, it is the duty moral duty of the United States of America because the United States virtually destroyed Afghanistan in the two decade long war. And even by leaving, it left Afghanistan in a chaotic situation a year ago. The Taliban has taken over, but the Taliban needs help, especially from regional countries. So my first idea is that this is the time when all the regional countries beginning with Pakistan, India, China, Russia, Iran and others, we must come together. We should set aside our other differences and make a common cause for helping Afghanistan. We should help Afghanistan move from war economy to development economy. Mm. We must put pressure through the United Nations and in other ways on the United States to unblock the assets, $7 billion that belong to the people of Afghanistan. And America has absolutely no business keeping those assets with itself. It amounts to robbery. At the same time, it is also our responsibility to put pressure on Taliban itself to move towards more inclusive yeah. national reconciliation by including all the stakeholders in governance as well as in redevelopment. And in this, as has been pointed out by other speakers, they must become more reformist. They must allow women to educate and to be complete partners in the public life and in national reconstruction. Right. So all, the of these, all of these, of all of these, and it must, be, it must be given up. Yeah, all of these, ladies and gentlemen, points are beautifully made. And yet the question is, what is on the ground? What are the realities and how far can we go from here? I want to ask a question to Senior Colonel Joe. The reality of the world is much more complicated than a blueprint about how to rebuild Afghanistan because it seems that there are so many things going on all at the same time, Senior Colonel Joe. The war, in, the war between Russia and Ukraine, for example, the geopolitics uh, competition, even some say rivalry between China and the United States, 
the regional instability in the region or surrounding Afghanistan, uh, and also the, uh, shall I say, military race going on as a result of ever increasing complicated issues. So how do you see, you know, where the building, rebuilding of Afghanistan vis-a-vis uh, -vis the global picture of urgencies, what would that mean for the rebuilding of Afghanistan? Despite all of these beautiful points made by every one of you, how much reality are we talking about? Well, I think uh, <clears throat> to give it a simple answer, that is uh, the Afghan issue has been marginalized uh, very much because of uh, what you have mentioned. But still, <clears throat> the regional efforts are still going on. Uh, as uh, I mentioned before, in the, for example, in the ministerial meetings uh, of the laboring countries of uh, you know, Afghanistan. But I was very happy to hear from the Indian speaker that all the regional countries, and I believe, uh, including India, should make uh, a great efforts because India was very much closely associated with uh, uh, at least the ex-government of, uh, of, uh, of uh, Afghanistan, and India is uh, also a close neighbor uh, to Afghanistan. So with all these international efforts, I would uh, say I agree with, very much with Pierre that uh, we can only provide necessary assistance, but this whole issue itself cannot be uh, totally dependent upon international effort. That the Afghan people got to make their own decision and they got to find out uh, the best way to address this issue. Mm. Look at China's reform opening up. And nobody gave us a theory as to what to do. We actually find it out uh, with all the efforts that we tried everything and eventually we concluded that this is the right way for us. Mm. Mr. Rubin, I know you have to run, but I guess America cannot just run away from the region. Uh, there is uh, uh, years of uh, uh, occupation and there is uh, uh, decades also of uh, challenges. So what is being left in Afghanistan? How much role the U.S. should play in rebuilding? Well, actually, quite, quite a lot has been left in Afghanistan. Uh, not all of the educated people have left. Uh, not all the roads have been destroyed and so on. But the fact is most of the institutions are in very bad shape, even though they're still operating because so many people have left and because of the uh, mismanagement by the Taliban, despite the efforts of some people in the Taliban to do much better. I pers my personal opinion is that the U.S. should be much more involved, not in uh, you know any military operations or anything like that, but in participating in and supporting the regional cooperation that several of the speakers have talked about. And that is regardless of our uh, disputes with China or even Russia, uh, we, still, we still have some common interests in Afghanistan, and we should recognize that. But I'm afraid that the political atmosphere, both in the United States and in the region, with the U.S. attitudes towards the countries in the region and the attitudes of the countries in the region to the United States are not conducive to that. Uh, some have suggested that the UN might be a solution for it, but uh, many of the people in the, many of the regional countries and, and the United States are reluctant to put the UN in charge of it. So uh, it's very frustrating, and the Afghan people are the victims of all of this. Mm. Barnett Rubin from the Stimson Center in the U.S., thank you so much, sir, for joining us. Let's continue our discussion. We talk about the international cooperation. Earlier, we have seen different kinds of platforms and discussions and conferences focusing on this. The international community has not yet recognized the Taliban government in Afghanistan. China has brought to the table solutions that are widely agreed upon by the region partners. Let's take a look at China's proposals, and then later we're going to have comments from all of you. In the third foreign minister's meeting among Afghanistan's neighbors in Tunxi, all parties pledged to support Afghanistan's reconstruction in areas such as humanitarian assistance, connectivity, economy and trade, agriculture, energy, and capacity building. They also announced the launch of a mechanism for regular consultations among special envoys from Afghanistan's neighbors and three working groups, namely political and diplomatic, economic and humanitarian, and security and stability, to follow up on the outcomes of the foreign minister's meetings. At the end of July, Wang Yi attended the Shanghai Cooperation Organization Foreign Minister's Meeting in Tashkent, capital of Uzbekistan. 
He said Afghanistan is now in a critical period of overcoming chaos and establishing governance. The SEO should adhere to dialogue and continue to help Afghanistan manage risks and overcome difficulties as well as fighting terrorism. So many attacks going on all at the same time. Mr. Suleiman, your quick comment. I think this is creating, again, a lot of frustration because we have had the OIC conference in Islamabad. There were conferences in, in Tashkent as well. China is also trying to involve. But as, I, as I'm telling you from Kabul here, we have not seen any, any changes on the ground. The situation for common, common Afghan is, is still very challenging mm. day by day. And this is an alarming situation when it comes to economy, education, and our, our future development. So that's why I need to emphasize again and again how this is important. Uh, we cannot continue without education. We cannot continue you know, with having a ban on, on education. We need to have some sort mm. of uh, space, both within Taliban and the international community, to come to an agreement and find out creative solutions for what is happening right now in Afghanistan. I see. We, we should remember that we cannot let the Afghan private sector fail. If the Afghan private sector fails, it will be a human catastrophe that we will be seeing in the near future. And if you talk to the private sector right now in Afghanistan, their uncertainty is at speak. Their frustration levels are all time high. Mm. Senior Colonel Joe, the Afghan voice suggested nothing has come to our way even though there were many conferences and talks and proposals and blueprints. Your comments? Well, I don't necessarily agree with Ms. Suleiman, as I mentioned before. At least the neighboring countries are working very hard, uh, you know, uh, to uh, make Afghan uh, better. In terms of the role of the United States, I was thinking about uh, one slogan made by President Biden, to build back better. But this is the country you have destroyed. Won't you like to build it back, if we do not talk about building it back better. But uh, I do echo with uh, the, 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 the lady from uh, Pakistan that Afghan, Afghan government got, has more things to do. Because uh, uh, the suspicion is uh, uh, the Afghan uh, government is not open and inclusive enough. And this seems to confirm the international suspicion that uh, you want to uh, let girls mm -hmm. beyond uh, grade six to go to school. Why don't you do that? And why don't you let uh, women to go to work? There is no international, or there is no Quran forbidding that, right? So I think it, it takes uh, uh, two to tango. That means the uh, Afghan government's efforts and uh, the efforts of the international community. Mm. Two to tango from Uzbekistan, Mr. Uh, Huramov. Also, your thoughts on that? Nothing is coming our way, according to Mr. Suleimani in Afghanistan. I fully agree with the uh, Mr. Uh, Kulkarni from India that we need a re regional approach how to solve the, the today's problems of Afghanistan. I think it's very re relevant the wide involvement of Afghanistan in regional economic processes. The involvement of Afghanistan in regional trade and economic ties, as well as uh, the implementation of the major infrastructure and socially uh, important projects in this country, uh, primarily in the areas of trade, transport, energy, agriculture, and healthcare, should remain the priority. These uh, the, these efforts will create a, a alternative to sources of income for the population and necessary incentives for for a transition to create uh, to creative and peaceful life for uh, uh, for the citizens of Afghanistan in this re regard Uzbekistan is in favor of implement, implement implementing major infrastructure projects in, in Afghanistan in particular construction of the Sulkhan Pulikumri electric power line will make it possible uh, to supply Afghanistan yeah. with uh, 6 million kilowatts per hour of electricity electricity annually, which will cover uh, one third of uh, electricity uh, needs uh, of that country. Thanks to this project, uh, 5,000 uh, families, social infrastructure and economic sectors in Afghanistan will have the access to electricity. In turn, uh, the implementation of the uh, Termes Mazar Shari Kabul Peshawar Railroad uh, project, which will be a logical continuation. When, of the when will, yeah, as beautiful as the plan is, uh, when will that be operation, you say? 
Uh, yeah, we we started the uh, work on this uh, project with our uh, with our partners in Afghanistan, and the, it will operate uh, in uh, 2023. Okay, India and Pakistan, both of you are neighbors uh, to Afghanistan. So, how much role really uh, are the two countries playing? Mr. Suleiman once again saying nothing is coming our way. Not much. Yes, um, if I may, before I answer that, I just had two quick points regarding, you know, the regional consensus and, of course, Pakistan and India, for that matter. Um, I do feel that there's a regional consensus on Afghanistan, but unfortunately, we don't have a regional framework. And hence the question, and while we've had, uh, you know, regional countries play a very pivotal role in Afghanistan, particularly in the peace process, and we've seen China at the forefront and we saw the Tashkent conference, unfortunately, we don't have a regional mechanism that can implement the policies. And I think this is something that needs to be focused on because we've seen the region take regional ownership. And I think this is a welcome development uh, because there is realization that one cannot always depend on the international community to bail it out. And of course, this is a region. Afghanistan is important for us. Um, I would like to say here that I think China is one country that could play the role of that regional interlocutor simply because it is always it doesn't have any historical baggage in Afghanistan and it does have a good relationship um, with majority of the regional countries as well as different factions in Afghanistan, primarily the Taliban. Now, another factor is that while the two principal stakeholders here, that is the United States and the Taliban, they the onus is on both of them to deliver. I do feel that with events unfolding in Ukraine, Afghanistan is being viewed more as a regional issue and it's yeah. being pushed on the region to deliver. And I think this is very naive and disingenuous of the international community to do so, if I may say so, because no conflict should take precedence over the other. And I think people are forgetting that Afghanistan is an issue that has always had global ramifications. Therefore, Afghanistan deserves and needs a collective and a shared response. And I think everybody has to chip in and one has to differentiate. It's not while, yes, so, humanitarian aid so is what is what is exactly the role of Pakistan, if you could be more specific? I'm coming to that. I do feel that while the humanitarian assistance is important, you need to focus on the economy. Remember, Afghanistan doesn't have an indigenous economy and you can't pin this on the Taliban. It's a country that has always depended on international aid, number one. Coming to Pakistan, I think Pakistan is following a regional approach where we expect the Taliban to deliver on their pledges of reform, again, pertaining to basic yet fundamental human rights and more importantly, counter-terrorism assurances. And unfortunately, the targeting of Zawahiri in Afghanistan does not help the Taliban in any sense. Uh, therefore, they have to deliver on that front. Um, we have provided immense humanitarian aid. We are still hosting the largest uh, number of refugees. But again, mm -hmm. we are following a regional approach. And if there is going to be, certainly there is engagement. But if there's going to be recognition, it will be, uh, you know, a regional consensus. Uh, and let me just say here that it's not all bleak. Uh, the Taliban have delivered on some front. I'm not their advocate, but I think we need to call a spade a spade. Certainly security has improved. Yeah. Corruption has been clamped in on, and you've seen the economy make little progress uh, through revenues and customs. But I think the aim right now should be continuous engagement. And when you engage with the Taliban, you will hold them accountable. But again, it is important for the Americans to step up. Yeah. They are the ones that, you know, signed the agreement and therefore, you know, they have to deliver on their front as well. And Pakistan will continue to engage with the Taliban government as well as with the international community because let me just say it, it might be a cliche. Let me just end here. Uh, it might be a cliche, but I think no other country benefits or suffers from Afghanistan as much as Pakistan does. Mm, thank you. Mr. Kukani, what about India? Regional cooperation to help Afghanistan rebuild itself is absolutely the most critical point. And in regional cooperation, cooperation between India and Pakistan is pivotal. Unfortunately, so far, India and Pakistan are both, if I may say so, guilty of uh, not strengthening their cooperation for the sake of helping a common brother, a common neighbor. There is a tendency which we have inherited from the past, and this is true of both India and Pakistan, that uh, 
we tend to play politics against each other using Afghanistan as the base and this must be given up. Hmm. Similarly, we must, this is, the time has come to revive SARC framework. My friend from Pakistan said that there is no regional framework. As a matter of fact, there has been a regional framework in the form of the South Asian Association for Regional Cooperation, SARC. But SARC has been in coma for several years. Not even a summit meeting has taken place for the last eight years or six years. Yeah. So SARC has to be revived. And Afghanistan, India, Pakistan are members of SARC. The second point is the Shanghai Cooperation Organization is playing a very important role. And Shanghai Cooperation Organization's Afghanistan's crisis group has to be made even more, more active. India, Pakistan are members. Uh, Iran is going to be a member. We all can play a very cooperative role, of course, with I China see. being the being the hub of this. I would like to make one last point. Connectivity is extremely important for the economic revival of Afghanistan. And here, the China-Pakistan economic corridor is something that can play a great uh, role. India should join CPEC and the Belt and Road Initiative. Similarly, India's initiative in Iran of building the Chabar port, which connects to the North-South corridor, going through Central Asian republics and, of course, Afghanistan, that is another connectivity project in which Pakistan and China and other countries should cooperate. So let us expand the overall circum circumference of regional cooperation and regional connectivity, ultimately it will help okay. Afghanistan. All right. Senior Colonel Joe, there's many proposals that are China related. Tell me more about where China is putting its emphasis on. Well, I think uh, the Indian speaker made uh, two very good points. Actually, he's the very first person that I, well, I have uh, listen to who actually advocate the Indian's connection with the Belt and Road Initiative, which is unprecedented. I like this idea. The second thing he mentioned that is important is the Shanghai Cooperation Organization. Because if uh, Iran joins the Shanghai Cooperation Organization, basically uh, Afghanistan lies in the very heart of Shanghai Cooperation Organization. So that means if uh, Afghanistan has a heart attack, then everybody else will suffer. So. The Shanghai Cooperation Organization can actually better help uh, the Afghanistan through this liaison group, which is, is still there. Mm -hmm. And I also would uh, ask uh, uh, almost a philosophical question. So when should we accept uh, Afghanistan as a SCO member? So do you accept it when every problem in Afghanistan is gone? It's not possible. Also, shall we breathe in the end so as to help Afghanistan to overcome this problem, or do we just consider, just like the pandemic, you just cannot eradicate it, so you just live with it. So this would be an ultimate question for Shanghai Cooperation Organization. And my personal suggestion is to let Shanghai Cooperation Organization accept Pakistan in the yeah. foreseeable future. Uh, on that, very quickly to Mr. Suleiman, very quickly to respond about that, different platforms how do you see where Afghan is interested in? Then I'm going to another panelist. Please, Mr. Suleiman. I think these are all great ideas presented by my fellows uh, to reactivate these regional frameworks. But we have to understand and kind of ask how much these regional frameworks were fruitful in the last 20 years. I, they, you know, there is SARC, there is uh, other frameworks like SEO, the heart of Asia. But I think these frameworks have not uh, resulted into something fruitful. So there has to be more action rather than uh, words coming out of these capitals from our region or in our neighborhoods. If, if, if it is believed that the pity politics that was conducted in Afghanistan in the last 20 years is going to continue and, uh, and will have a positive effect, I don't think so. We need to revise our lenses. We need to see uh -huh. Afghanistan purely from an Afghanistan lens. And we need to consider Afghanistan is a friend of the region and a friend of the world. 
Uh, it has great potential, connects Central Asia with South Asia. A $300 billion economy in the Central Asia could be connected to South Asia, and we need to uh, you know, work more on that. So, so I think it would take much more of a broader actions uh, on the ground that will uh, result and that mm. will decide how regional consensus would actually uh, you know, work in, in this country. I see. Mr. Krubo, you want to briefly respond to that? Well, I just, uh, when listening to these points, was reminded when I spent the first time uh, working in Afghanistan in the mid-90s. And that was a time when much of the world had withdrawn and essentially given up on Afghanistan. Uh, there was no investment, there was no emphasis anymore on Afghanistan. The world moved on to other crises. It was the time of the Balkan conflicts. It was uh, then the genocide in Rwanda. And Afghanistan was essentially given up on. And I think whatever angle we take, and my angle is not a political angle because the International Committee of the Red Cross with its neutrality does not mm. Uh, comment on the politics of it, but from a human perspective, it is not an option to walk away from Afghanistan. It is not an option to show indifference to Afghanistan because mm. it's now in a different phase. On the contrary, if we think about the human costs of wars, these are so huge. The collective trauma yeah. that communities have gone through, through the 40 years of war, just simply do not allow us as an international community in the strongest sense, not in the narrow sense, mm. in, as an international community, as a humanity, to give up on our commitments to Afghanistan. We believe in this in the humanitarian field, but I think there is a clear case that has been made in this mm. forum that that is not enough, and Afghanistan's horizon is not a humanitarian horizon. It is a horizon of investment, of cooperation, and resolving the long-standing issues that have right. affected this country. I think you beautifully summed up uh, many of our hopes in a way, and that is why we need to have discussions like this in order to make sure we confirm those hopes and we work for those hopes with uh, incremental steps. Last question for every one of you about the social issues. Many of you talked about uh, the rights of women and also the girls' access to education. Now, we know that it's very important for every society. Uh, Pierre, you have colleagues on the ground telling you stories every day taking place over there. How much do you see the transition we are facing right now about that front, the social changes? How much will that put an impact on the overall rebuilding process in Afghanistan? Well, I think that um, when you look at an event that took place recently, that was uh, an earthquake that affected uh, eastern parts of Afghanistan very seriously. What struck many of our colleagues on the ground was that when among the victims, the families brought uh, their relatives to hospitals and clinics and were suddenly concerned in these regions that there was insufficient female personnel in many of the clinics and hospitals to attend to women and girls who had been injured in the earthquake. Mm. Well, this is, of course, then a reflection of exactly what needs to be addressed, because one cannot have things, in a sense, both ways. Mm. Right? You have to say educating girls mm. is a necessity. The ICRC strongly believes in equal rights, and therefore we are focusing on keeping women employed yeah. in hospitals because any society that needs to, wishes to move forward has to invest in education of boys and girls. Miss mm. Khan, you are the only woman in the panel. Uh, I'm so glad we also have a women's voice. How do you see, you know, on the one hand, a country like Afghanistan to be able to keep its culture as they are proud of, but on the other hand, make sure that the rebuilding process can uh, proceed uh, with better lives for everyone in that country? Uh, I think um, being a Pashtun and, and having commonalities, of course, with Afghanistan, um, I think education is something that um, is beyond any culture or for that matter, any religion. It's a basic right that is given to anyone. And I think it's a bit contradictory. And I've said this to the Taliban time and again, that them being students themselves, 
do not have the right to deny this basic yet fundamental right to any person, regardless of their gender. Um, but this is not to say, uh, let me just say here that while there has been, you know, issues revolving around women's education, we still see women coming out and protesting. And I think this is something that warrants a little recognition on the part of the Taliban, that at least people can come out and voice their concerns. So this is a positive development in one sense. But again, I think it's pivotal for the Taliban to honor their basic pledges of reform. And again, education is an area that is non-controversial. And if they do so, I think it will expand the, the horizon for regional countries to interact with the group. Yeah. Um, and I can't emphasize this enough. Mm. Senior Colonel Joe, I know social issues are not necessarily uh, your job description, but we know rebuilding the country takes concerted efforts from all parties of the society. Your thoughts on this? Well, certainly uh, of the uh, U.S. Department, Wendy Sherman talked uh, to her, her Chinese counterpart on how China and the United States could actually cooperate uh, in uh, anti-narcotics. I thought about this. I think it's such a good idea because uh, probably over 80 percent of international opium came from uh, uh, Afghanistan. But the question is, because opium would be so important to Afghan people, especially if you do not give their own money back to them, what other living can, can they make? So you have to give them means, you know, to make a living. And then we can talk about such kind of joint efforts mm. in eradicating, you know, drugs. So you are suggesting women's uh, equal rights is not the only social issue that uh, Afghan need to work on, but rather the international community should also give their hand at least to make sure there is the context in which they can operate yeah, to yeah. make their society fairer. Pierre? It's clear that if there is no horizon to resolve some of these critical issues, then uh, there will be again the risk of instability. And I think there is an interest now to address issues. There is an mm. opportunity to do that. And the ICRC, through its humanitarian work, is giving a contribution. But as we've said, a lot more needs to be done. Mm. Mr. Kukani? Women's rights are non-negotiable in any country because, uh, as uh, Chairman Mao said, women hold half the sky. And therefore, reform in religious dogma in Afghanistan is extremely important. And Taliban and other groups in Afghanistan should be encouraged by the international community to, to grant what is the fundamental right of women. At the same time, this should not be made a precondition for helping Afghanistan, mm -hmm. as some people in the West tend to do. The most important issue in Afghanistan is stability, peace, development, and inclusive governance. Yeah. Now, if these continue over a period of time on a parallel track, social reform will also happen. All right, great points. If you were asked by the president of your country or by the UN Secretary General about what they can do for Afghanistan and how you can contribute, what would you say? Let's start from uh, our guest in Uzbekistan. Uh, we should, I think we should work together on, uh, as I mentioned about the, about the regional consensus and regional appro approach, how to solve the situ uh, situation in Afghanistan and the economic integration of Afghanistan to the regional processes. Thank you. Afghanistan is a member of the South Asian family. And if any member in a family is suffering, is in need of help, it is the moral responsibility and the family responsibility of one and all okay. to help. And that's why I reiterate that India, Pakistan, and all other countries in the region must come to the aid of our brothers and sisters in Afghanistan. Ms. Khan, in Pakistan. Remain engaged and uh, do not abandon Afghanistan and certainly do not make the mistakes of the past. And I welcome what Mr. Kulkarni has said uh, on all fronts, particularly uh, the CPEC, um, you know, 
the welcoming of I the see. views on CPEC. All right, Mr. Suleiman. Afghanistan does not need aid, it needs more trade. Uh, please fix the banking issue in Western our youth, particularly with education. Please do not repeat the politics of the last 20 years. We are grateful to our guests both in our Beijing studio and online. And that's all for today's special discussion, Afghanistan in Transition, Rebuilding the Country and Reconstructing the Country of Afghanistan. I'm Tian Wei on behalf of CGTN's team in both Beijing and Kabul, and our partner in Shamsha TV with Afghanistan. Thanks for watching. Bye for now.